What's up Titans, Steve here from GamerTitan.com. Today we're going to be talking about audio and core, how we can use it to make our game better, and uh, how to use it in scripts. I'm also going to talk about the differences between smart audio and regular audio throughout this video. So I encourage you to follow along and hopefully you learn something new. As always, this project will be found in the link in our description so you can download this project, add it to your maps folder, and you can borrow any scripts that you'd like or follow along with me. So let's get into it. How do we add audio to our game? Well, there's a couple different ways. First, let's find an audio in the core content. So we have a bunch of these audios and it seems like there's a bug right now that shows smart audios as regular audios. And then if you find a regular audio, it'll show it as a smart audio. See, this is saying it's a smart audio but we have the preview on non-smart audios and we have no preview on smart audios. So for example, if I add this to my hierarchy, you can see that there's no smart audio tab here. And of course you can preview it over here, which tells us it's not a smart audio. Then if I go here, this is just saying it's an audio. In fact, this is a smart audio because we do not have the play button. I can add it to my hierarchy and we can see that there is a smart function here in the properties tab. And so smart audios are audios that we can make changes to in multiple different ways. So for example, on this smart audio, we can change all these different things on it. So if I take a play to what it is right now, okay. Now I should be able to change it, and I should be able to hit play. And it sounds different. Then I can play it again. Once again, it's gonna be different. So smart audios have all sorts of different functions within them that you can change to make them suit your needs. Now, if I go back to a regular audio, such as this arrow shoot impact. I can of course play it up here. Then we can go through all these different uh, audio settings. And I'm gonna go through and tell you what all of them mean. So spatialization, you can see here it says enable spatialization. This means it will play to a specific channel. So what that means is that this, if you have a surround sound headset, you'll be able to hear where the object's coming from. So for example, if this is right here in the middle, of the map and I'm standing here on the left of it, it will come through my right earphone because it'll hear where that sound is coming from in reference to my player. Attenuation is used to fade sounds. So if I want my sound to fade, such as I have here, this is what I use the fall off radius for. I can change this to 500 as well. Then you can see that Inside this green sphere, I'll have the full volume of my sound. But outside of the green sphere, in the purple sphere, I will still be able to hear it. And based on how far away I am, that is how much I'll be able to hear it. And then outside the purple sphere, I won't be able to hear it at all. If I disable this, then I won't be able to hear it at all out in the purple zone, and I'll only be able to hear it in the blue, green zone. Then we have occlusion. So this will change how the sound sounds based on if there's geometry or objects in between. So that's why I put this wall here. So this sound will actually sound different based on if I'm on the other side of this wall. I'm gonna try and show you that as best as I can. It's a little bit tough, especially if we don't have a surround sound headset. Then we have autoplay. So if I have autoplay enabled, because this is in my hierarchy, as soon as I hit play, it's going to spawn this asset and it's gonna play it. So if I move this over to my spawn point over here, when I hit the play button, I'm gonna minimize this a little bit, we'll hear the arrow twang. There we heard it. I'll turn it up a little bit just in case you guys can't hear it. And I'll hit play one more time. So that's what autoplay does. If I turn autoplay off, press play, the arrow is still in our hierarchy, but it won't play unless something it tells it to play. 
and I'll show you that how we can do that with a script right away. Then we have, of course, our radius. This is how big of an area it'll play at full volume. Then our fall off, that is this purple circle around, and that'll be how far you can hear it, but not necessarily at full volume based on how far you are away. Then the fade in time is going to be the audio will start at zero and it will fade in over a couple of seconds. So you might want to use this for things like music. That way the music doesn't slam in as soon as a character enters an area. You can have it so it slowly starts coming on and then fade out time. You can have it when a character leaves an area, it slowly starts fading out instead of the audio just shutting off. And then we have a start time, which is the start within the audio track. So if I went to this audio track, for example, and I hit play, and I decided that I don't really like the intro, but I like this part when uh, the music is playing a little bit more, then I could set my start time to five or so seconds. And then when I hit play, uh, I guess that will only work when I go into the game. So I'd have to have that sound near me and then it would start the sound at five seconds. So that's only when you're actually in the game. When you preview it, it won't do your start time. Then let's go through a little bit more on smart audio. So every smart audio is slightly different. For example, this one, we can change the volume of all the different instruments played. And this can really change what a sound sounds like. For example, if I turn this up and this down, this up, this down, we'll just play around with it, see what happens. So it sounds slightly different. And then we also have a pitch knob, which will change the pitch of the music. So you can change this and this will change how it sounds drastically. I wonder if this is not working because of that. See, I played with this before and I had it working, but it wouldn't work when I had it to apply the effects, even though it should only work when I have it to apply the effects. But let's just reset this for now. I think it's just a bug with the system. I've shown you what all the different properties do. So let's show you how you can use the audio now. So I got a couple of cubes here in front of me. And when I walk up to this cube, I want the sound to start. And when I leave, it's going to end. So I walk up and we can hear a jet plane hissing in the background. And then I leave and the sound goes away. Same thing's gonna happen here at this other cube. But you've seen on the right hand side, we have a object spawn now. Whereas before we didn't have that spawn and now it's deleted. So let's just go into these cubes real quickly. I encourage you to follow along with my script. So this right here is the aircraft cockpit interior wind whistle. And I do not have this set to autoplay, but this is always in my hierarchy. So I created a script and I added my aircraft cockpit interior by clicking and dragging and my trigger, click and drag to here. And that way I can add them to my script. Then I can copy that and put it in here. And so if you didn't see my triggers video, I encourage you to check it out. There'll be other videos for you guys to check out too on code. So we're just gonna go over this quick just to show you how to make an object play. So this is taken out of the script generator as well on trigger overlap. And I took parts of this out to help with my code. So if we go back to this code on begin overlap, which of course is with the trigger, we're connecting this event. We can simply put jet whistle, which is referencing our sound, which is in our hierarchy right here to start playing. And then when the player leaves, we have it stop playing by using this function right here. This is the core API. So we want a colon. And then of course, both are going to be capitals and we need the brackets afterwards or they will not work. Then I'm going to show you another way that you can do it on cube two. And this one, this one doesn't have the sound on it. And how I did this was I created a template with the sound. 
So if I wanted to do that, I could just drag a sound over here. I can right click, I can change it to whatever I want first, of course. And then for this, I want autoplay enabled. I can right click and I can create a new template from this and I can name it whatever I want. Then when you go to your project content, you'll see that you have these objects. This one I had to network before I did that. So I can't do that now. So I'd have to redo it, but I'd enable networking. Then I'd create a template. And then what I would do is I would open my script here and I would slide my template over here and I would change that to whatever I'd like. So in here, it's going to get this custom property, which I added by sliding the object over. And something that I did here was make it so that the object would only spawn once. So if this is a multiplayer game, you can use a function like this, where I have a variable that's called players overlap, which tells me how many players are overlapping this cube. So when a player overlaps the cube, player overlap, we add one to the value. So every time a player enters the area, we add one to the value. But the only time we actually spawn the world asset is when the player's overlap is equal to one. So then we spawn this asset right here, the wind whistle, which is right here, which is getting that custom property, which is from my templates. We go world.spawn asset. This is from the core API, and then we need a position. So what I did was I just got the position of the trigger because I know it's the same, but there's a million different positions that you could put there. You could put a X, Y, Z coordinate, whatever you'd like, or you could make it spawn on the player. Of course, we're gonna have a video on positions soon. So I encourage you to check that out when we have it come out. And then when a player leaves, it uh, subtracts one from the player overlap. And if the player's overlap equals zero, then it's going to destroy the object. So it just finds the object and then it destroys it. And that is done by using a colon and destroy. So when I hit play, player enters, it uh, spawns the asset, and when a player leaves, it deletes the asset. Now I'm just going to show you a piece of equipment. I made a Titan Halo, I'll make this a little bit bigger for you guys. And what I did with this one is I made an equipment with an ability. So when I right click, I roll and it makes some bone cracking sounds. First my guy makes a little sound. and Using the event log, I can show you a little bit more that the Titan initiated a roll, he's rolling, and then he's recovered. So let's just quickly look at the script for that. So I added an equipment with automatically came with a pickup trigger. Then I made it enableable or interactable with an interaction label. Then we can go to the script and I added these two objects. So these objects, neither of them have autoplay because I'm playing them through my script. So if we open our script, this script is taken directly from the script generator for abilities. I took this and I just modified the print function and I added my own functions. So I encourage you to download that and check it out. So on cast ability, this is taken right from them. It prints Titan initiated the role, which you can see here. And then it takes this prop which is the male grunt sound, which we got up here. I can get that by copying it from over here when I drag it onto my script. And then I use the play function. Same thing here on Titan is rolling. I added a wait function for 0 0.2 of a second. Then it plays the bone crack sound by, of course, up here, bone crack sound effects. It gets the property from here, which I added, and then it plays it and then on recovery it says titan is recovered on cooldown it said titan's ready to roll we're gonna have a entire tutorial on abilities themselves but i just wanted to show you how you could add audio to your abilities so there we can see 
in the event log on the bottom. So right now if I right click, nothing can happen and I'm ready to roll and I can roll again. Lastly, I'm going to show you how to add it to a weapon. So if I equip the weapon, I'm shooting soccer balls and you can hear shoot. So let's take a look at that. I just spawned in a generic weapon with a pickup trigger, attack ability, reload ability. And you can see there's no sounds in here. So how I added the sounds was through templates. So on my projectile template, it spawns a ball and it also spawns the sound. So if I go here and I add this to my hierarchy, now we can look at it. So I have the ball, of course, which is just the ball, and I have the gunshot, which is the pistol and revolver. We can change it to whatever we want, update it, and then it will update it. So I'm just going to build a quick one for you. Say, for instance, we wanted it to shoot skulls instead. So let's, uh, let's get this gunshot audio again. We should be able to find it in the hierarchy. There we go, find it in the catalog. Uh, it looks like it just gets my whole script. Okay, so let's go to the pistol and gunshot revolver. We're gonna add that. And then we're going to add a skull. So I'm going to add that to that. And for this, I need it to autoplay enabled because when it spawns that projectile, I want it to play that sound. So I can get rid of this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to enable networking on it. Then we're going to create a network context, a new client context containing this. Yes now should have that inside of it and now i can enable networking and i can create a new template from this so we can call that the skull bullet new template and then when i go to my project content we'll have the skull bullet We'll go over everything about weapons in a separate video. I'm just trying to show you the audio portion of it so I can delete this. And if I go to my weapon for my projectile template, I'm going to click and drag my skull bullet. Now let's hit play. Let's see how it sounds. Awesome, everything's working. So that's all I have to show you guys today. Uh, have a good one. See you Titans later.